Meet Loader, the swinging, swiping swine that sweats, sweeps and sways, swashbuckling switchblades with swift swagger. Melee is a much harder playstyle in Risk of Rain 2 over ranged attacks. First, how are you going to reach flying enemies? And it's hard to not stay in the pack of enemies when you want to stay in the pack of enemies. The only thing melees do have for them is their stats. Their base health and armor is really just obscene when compared to ranged attackers. When it comes to armor, you're not even supposed to have any. And health, base loader has almost double Huntresses and through scaling you can just triple it easily. And all of that with extra armor too. Yup, not broken guys. With loader you basically get double base HP with the armor and on top of that, we have your passive, which gives you 5% max HP barrier. So it's the yellow HP on every hit with your gauntlets. Precision with your gauntlets. This will be important later. And yes, Loader gets even more HP. Because it's necessary for melees, right? Oh, and on top of that, she has a second passive. Because nothing says balance like multiple passives. <laughs> right, League of Legends? That second passive does make sense for the character, though, as you don't take fall damage, so... Oh, oh, oh wait, you don't take fall damage. Th th that takes away a full negative point of the game. W what? Seriously, put all of this passive in tandem with your auto attacks, which give you 5% max HP barrier on every enemy hit. The wiki is wrong, don't listen to it. And then put this with your secondary, and things are insane when it comes to your mobility and your resistances. For the secondary, uh, we won't talk too much about them. Just know that one of the two is definitely the stronger version, because one just pulls people or you pull yourself to them and you can Spider-Man off of them, but the other one is the same, with the same cooldown and everything. But you can deal damage and briefly stun. It's also very hard to get though, so have fun trying to get it. By the way, this is the first time we will actually make a distinction on both versions of an ability. And we will keep doing so for the whole kit here. The one great thing with either version of this ability is the movement you can gain off of it. There's not much more to say, you'll just look very cool while doing all of the swinging with the character. We haven't even began to scratch the surface with this character, by the way. You may think we've already looked at what makes Loader strong, but she's not just a one-course meal. She's a three-course meal with a trou normand and a wedding cake for dessert. And I'm not talking about one of those small wedding cakes. I'm talking about a tower twice your size. In this meal metaphor, we're here. The first of the two shift abilities is a charge-up dash. The charge time is reduced by your attack speed, but at the beginning of the game, it should take about two seconds to fully charge it. By the way, quick tip, your sprint will reset when you use the ability, but you can sprint again after pressing shift, so that's a good way to get extra speed. And by the way, extra speed is extra damage with this ability, which already has an absurd amount of damage. I'm not kidding, here's a royal capacitor, here's a prion accumulator, and here's the shift damage. You get 10 meters per second while charging, and you're at the damage of both. I don't even have words. Oh wait, did I forget something? Of course I did. Every enemy hit gives you 5% barrier. Every single one. Get a group of 10 enemies, and you get 50% max health barrier. Loader is an anomaly. It shouldn't be humanly possible for a character to get this much stuff, and yet here we are. And we're not done! That's not okay, man. And whereas this ability is actually a bit more about control, the second one is completely different. It's raw strength, or so you'd hope. Thunder Gauntlet is different, however, in some circumstances, 
I'd say it's better than the charged one. Sure, you cannot keep this one up for as long as you want, but you'd be remiss if you thought this was bad. A cooldown of 5 seconds, damage of 2100% of the basic charge, and don't worry, it also has that 30% damage every meter per second during charge up, and it creates a cone of lightning that deals not 1000% damage, but 900% damage. However, 900% is still more than enough to kill any small flying enemy. The thing you do have to keep in mind, though, is the fact that the Shockwave doesn't give you any barrier, unless you have a Topaz Brooch, which you may, it's only a white after all. The thing I like about the shift is the trade-off you've got. Take your pick! Trugasar! Myself, though, I mostly choose the first option, because you can do a lot of cool stuff with the swinging and using this at the same time, and it deals a ton of extra damage. Oh, and also, it's good for the barrier. I much preferred myself, but both are definitely usable, and I used both. With the first shift, though, you can pull off something like this. Thunder Slam is the first thing you'll unlock on this character if you love fun, because this ability is really fun to use, and it is also extremely powerful. 2000% damage is two-thirds the damage of a Royal Capacitor. And if you're noticing a trend, yeah, that's the point. This character basically has one and two-thirds Royal Capacitors, and if you add a Royal Capacitor on top of your one and two-thirds Royal Capacitors and do the math, the chances of enemy surviving drastic go down. Senior Mythrix, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you on the moon of Petrichor 5. Other than that, this ability is good at dealing with a single enemy, and with groups whenever you'll have any on-kill items like Gasoline or Will-O-The-Wisp. And as for the second R ability, it's one you may think is arguably worse, but I still like it. Uh, this electric field thing deals very little damage, but there's two things that make it stand out. The first is that it's pretty good at dealing with groups of flying enemies. Even if the damage is low, their HP is too. And for the second thing, it's a bit more on the practical side, and it's just that you can use the thing you throw as a structure for your grappling hook. So you can s swing a bit whenever you want. Yeah, pick Thunder Slam. Since it exists, it's just better in almost all cases, because gasoline is easy to get anyway. Oh man, that covers everything for abilities. And that was really long. Let's do a death montage. I'm an idiot, okay? I'm an idiot, you guys. For a more general look at Loader and her combos, just make sure you never get close to enemies without either a good amount of barrier or abilities up. I'd recommend getting a backup magazine quickly, because this can get you out of trouble fast whenever you hook in, because you'd be able to hook out efficiently. Other than that, you can really use either Shift or R to enter fights, but make sure you've got full charge and have a good amount of move speed for Shift. Seriously, almost 3k% percent damage without move speed, and get just 10 meters per second of speed, and you're already at 3000%, just like that! And that's basically base speed. No matter what, I'll ask you to either keep a hook, have magazines, or bandoliers, those work too. One last thing, compared to Railgunner, Loader is just better, because she can use Shatter Spleen. By the way, small correction, Railgunner can use the Shroom, but only with the help of the bleed items. You'd still get the explosions and the massive percent max HP damage. You know what? Let's end this on a joke. When Loader asks to go to your house, she'll just ask to... swing by. 
Thanks for watching! Before leaving, I do have an announcement. As this video gets released on a Saturday, I will be streaming at 9 pm Central European time. Link is normally on the screen. You can also watch my Railgunner guide on the left side of your screen right now. Go watch it, it's good, trust me. And you can also subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for more, and follow me on Twitter, X, as well. Take care, everyone, and see you next time.